Let us now look at what's called the coefficient of variation. So this is the ratio of the standard deviation to the expected value for each decision. Um, the standard deviation formula is the following. Here it is right here. You take your difference between your payoffs for each decision and the EMV for that decision. Square those differences, times them by the probability of um, the payoff occurring for that particular decision for that particular outcome. We will look at that. Uh, add all of those up. Um, so you go um, down a decision and look at each possible outcome within that decision and look at the probabilities and the payoffs for each of those outcomes. Do that for each. Sum all of those um, products up and then square root it. Again, we will look at that in Excel in a minute. Um, and once you have that standard deviation, you compare it to the EMV for that decision, times that by 100%. Um, and that gives you uh, a measure of how variable um, the payoffs are for that decision. The higher the variation, the higher the risk associated with that decision. Okay, um, so let's have a look at how to do this in Excel. Okay, so here we are. So here are our formulas. Uh, we're going to get to the R RTRR last. That's actually the easiest of them all. So first of all, what we need to do is go get these standard deviations. What I've done and what I recommend that you do is make yourself a new table to get the standard deviation. You don't have to, I just find it a lot easier. Okay, so what I do is the following. For each decision, I go down the payoffs, compare each of them to their EMV, square that, times by the probability for each one, and then square root that. Whew. Okay, so let's try this out. So for each um, possible outcome, for each decision, I take the difference between the actual payoff, and I'm gonna put this in brackets, the actual payoff minus the EMV for that decision. I'm gonna lock the nine, but not the C. I want to always compare to my EMVs no matter which row I'm in here. Um, so I wanna stay in row nine for my EMVs for this part. I'm going to put that to the power of two to do this squared bit. And then I'm going to times by the probability, this one right here. Okay, and I'm going to lock the E there. I want to grab my probabilities from column E each time. Okay, that is going to give me, and it's okay if it's a very large number. Ah, there we go. Sorry about that. Huh. That's going to give me the inside piece here. Okay, and I'm going to um, copy those down, and that's going to give me each of those um, squared differences times the probabilities. Okay, each one's times its probability. You can um, click on each to make sure it's grabbing the correct cells. And then what you do to take the uh, standard deviation, you take the square root, the square root of the sum of those values. So I'm now doing that square root and I'm doing that sum now. I already got this inside piece for each and now I'm doing the square root and the sum. All right, and good news is you only need to do this once if you lock the correct cells, just follow exactly what I did. Got and then copy that down and then do the same thing, take the square root of the sum. Beautiful, so that gives us our standard deviations. So for build, yes, it's that um, 36 million. For build, no, it's 17 million. So those are the average kind of variations here or differences away from our average expected values or expected profits. So we expect if we don't build a new plant to make 79 million, if we do build a new plant, we expect to make 37 million. But with variations of 36 million on the building the new plant and 17 million on not building the new plant uh, on average. Um, okay, so now let's look at what's called our coefficient of variation here, this guy. So we've got our uh, standard deviations here. Uh, next, we're getting our coefficient of variation by taking the ratio of um, each of the um, 
standard deviations, take the ratio of the standard deviation to the expected value for each um, here, sorry. Um, so take the standard deviation divided by the expected value for each decision and then times that by 100% or if you will, I like to put that in percentage form. Um, okay, maybe display, depends what you need to answer for your answer, but maybe display three or four decimals. Um, copy that across control C, control V, and we have the same ratio here. Um, so the standard deviation divided by the mean, and let's see here. So now when we're deciding according to the CV, um, usually the lower the CV, the better. So uh, I would say if I were picking according to my coefficient of variation, I would decide to not build the plant. I'm going to fix that in a second. So I would not build the plant and my coefficient of variation uh, re resulting from that decision is that 21.68 roughly.